Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today, back by popular demand, I am going to be doing another high-end foundation wars. If you want me to do a drugstore foundation wars at any time, please do comment below and I'll be happy to get on with that ASAP. There are some fantastic drugstore foundations around, but today is the turn of Dior and Laura Mercier. These are two foundations I have never tried before. This is the Dior Skin Forever Undercover and the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation. So I'm gonna be seeing how these apply today and how long they last and how they look on my skin. If you are interested in finding out my thoughts and feelings on these products, then please keep watching. Okay, so let's just look at the products themselves. The Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation is in a glass bottle. It is very lush, luxurious, really pretty bottle very very chunky if you drop this on the floor it may smash whereas the Dior Forever Undercover plastic bottle not as luxurious but a lot more robust so you get 40 mils of product in the Dior unheard of really usually it's 30 mils as standard but you do get 40 mils for 34 pounds which is 52 dollars in the us at sephora the laura mercier you get the standard 30 mils it's 35 pounds or 48 dollars in sephora okay so let's have a look at the similarities and differences the laura mercier has 15 hours of wear whereas the dior says it's got 24 hours wear capability both have been tested on around about 20 women to get those results the dior says it's full coverage whereas the laura mercier says that it's medium to full coverage definitely definitely buildable this has 20 shades the dior has 26 shades and both say that they have a second skin matte finish the Laura Mercier says that it is non-dull, non-flat and non-cakey. It minimises pores and it controls oil. So this may not be good for dry skin people. This is primarily says for normal to oily skinned people. So just bear that in mind before you buy it. Both say they are transfer resistant and the Dior says it's kiss proof, touch proof and life proof. Whatever that means. The Laura Mercier says that it's humidity, sweat and water resistant and it's also transfer resistant as well. I'm going to test that out a little bit later on. Now, if you've tried the Dior Forever foundation that they brought out previously, they say that this one has almost double the amount of pigmentation in there. So it is much fuller coverage than the previous foundation that they brought out. Both say that they are weightless and the Dior foundation is water based. So let's get some of this on the skin. Okay, so like I said, I have been color matched in store. The Laura Mercier foundation is 1N1 cream and the Dior is shade 010, so 10. This looks really dark. Okay, so I'm going to be applying both foundations with a brush just to get a little bit of a fuller coverage. I'm gonna be putting the Dior on this side of my face and I'll put the Laura Mercier on this side of my face and see how we get on. Okay, so the Dior going on first. Let's just dot some of that over. This does seem a little bit dark for me, but like I said, I was color matched. This is a really liquidy consistency. It sits like a cream on your hand and then when it hits the warmth of your skin, it really does liquidize quite a lot. It's not actually too dark for my skin, which is, shouldn't be surprising because I was color matched in store. Okay, so it's dried down perfectly, doesn't feel heavy at all. It's definitely a full coverage. If I was to apply another layer of this, it would be super full coverage. You can still see a tiny bit of my acne scarring through this, but if I was to use any other foundation, it will be exactly the same. I haven't used very much foundation at all, actually. I've got a lot more on my hand that I thought I was going to have to use and I'm not going to use it. I think that's actually that's actually okay. 
Hmm. It blended out really well, didn't dry down very, very quickly. You didn't have to work with it super quickly just in case it went cakey on your skin. So I'm definitely pleased where that's concerned. And let's try the Laura Mercier. This has got the same consistency as the Dior. See how that applies. Now this is definitely too pale for my skin, which I am really disappointed about because I was colour matched in store. It's not too off, but I'm definitely going to have to bronze this. I'll just blend these two together, otherwise I'll look like Two-Face out of the Batman cartoons. That's no good. Okay, both are really, really nice foundations. The Laura Mercier side has dried down a little bit tackier. I haven't put any more foundation on. It's just one layer. It is a little bit on the sticky side, whereas the Dior is just super smooth at the moment. Okay, so the Laura Mercier foundation said that it was going to minimize my pores. I don't think it's done that actually. I think it's accentuated them slightly just on this area, whereas the Dior foundation didn't actually say it was gonna do anything to my pores. And it actually has minimized my pores. I'm gonna see how the rest of my makeup applies and I'll be right back. Okay, so all my makeup is now applied. It all applied beautifully on both sides. No preference there. Now I don't think you can see it on camera, but on the Dior side, my pores look minute. They have all been airbrushed. Whereas on the Laura Mercier side, even though it said that it would minimize my pores, not only has it not minimized my pores, it's also exaggerated all the texture that I've got on my skin as well. Now that may get better throughout the day so I don't really want to give you an evaluation on the product right now because this has got to stay on for a really long time so let's see how it wears throughout the day I am going to check in with you a little bit later on and let you know how it's getting on and how it looks it's definitely both sides are completely matte there is no shine whatsoever apart from the highlighter that I've put on my cheekbones so it is definitely a flat matte product on both sides. None of them feel drying in any way. Both of them are very hydrating. N neither side now feels sticky. I know I said earlier on that the uh, Laura Mercier side didn't dry down as well. It is now completely dry. No tackiness to it whatsoever, no stickiness and definitely both sides are very very weightless so let's see how it gets on throughout the day i will see you all a little bit later on welcome to the check-in i am amazed at how well both of these foundations have done over 10 hours since i first applied the foundations to my face the first thing that shouts out about both these foundations is what amazing bases they are for the rest of your makeup. I haven't reapplied any of my makeup apart from my lip balm today and both sides look like I have just applied. They have held bronzer, they have held highlighter, they have held blush, they have held contour. I have not reapplied anything and everything is still there like I have just first applied it. Seriously, seriously impressed by the base. But the Dior side, there is a little bit of creasing here and that happened about an hour into the day. Also up here, there is a little bit of creasing also. That happened also after about an hour of wear. It's not moved, it's not caked in any way, it's also not separated at all with any oils. It still looks absolutely amazing. It is more of a satiny finish now than a flat matte look, 
which I personally prefer, you might not, but I just think it looks beautiful now and it looks far more flattering than it did when it first went on. My pores are still completely airbrushed and non-existent. And also on the Laura Mercier side, this got better the longer that I wore it. The pores do look larger on this side than they do on the Dior side, but they did right from the very beginning. They do look more airbrushed now than they did before and I think it's because this is more of a satiny finish like the Dior side now than a flat matte finish and I think that's just more flattering for pores in general. So I am a little bit upset that the Laura Mercier hasn't fared better than the Dior only because it's got oil control capabilities in there which the Dior doesn't say that it has so I was expecting it to be a lot more matte than it actually is so it's actually shinier on the Laura Mercier foundation side than the Dior side and the Laura Mercier made promises that it hasn't kept it's still beautiful I'm not knocking it but if it says that it's going to stay on for 15 hours and it's going to stay matte it needs to do that and it hasn't also the Laura Mercier side really oxidized badly to such an extent that I blended it into my neck and I blended it in perfectly and throughout the day it looked like I'd got a bit of a ring around where it had oxidized so much that it looked like I had a bit of a mask on and I hate that. It's not because I didn't blend it very well, it's because it oxidised, which the Dior did not do. Beautiful still. There is no foundation on the end of my chin on either side. If I ever find a foundation that will stay on the end of my chin all day, I will be running around praising absolutely everything that exists. It never happens. I haven't found one yet. So if I had to pick a winner today, it would definitely be the Dior. The Dior has been so constant throughout the day. It's never changed at all, apart from getting a little bit of a satiny finish on top. My pores still look tiny, still looks airbrushed. There is a slight bit of oiliness around my nose, but it hasn't separated at all and a little bit of a crack here but it is really really dry there because that's where I've had all my breakouts and salicylic acid every single day. On the Laura Mercier side I really can't complain I am being so picky believe me the more foundations I try the pickier I get so I am being extremely picky if you love this foundation please don't take offense I am just really struggling to tell you what is actually wrong with either of these foundations so I am being so so picky if I was gonna pick a winner it would be the Dior only because of the oxidization on the Laura Mercier side really disappointed me and also the fact that it didn't hold back the oil as well as I thought it was going to. It's still done really well, still looks amazing and it has looked better throughout the day. Also what we've got to touch on when we are considering which product is better is the fact that you are getting a third more product in the Dior foundation than you are getting in the Laura Mercier for exactly the same amount of money, making the Dior far better value for money than the Laura Mercier. As for being transfer proof, I have tested both these foundations continuously throughout the day with my mobile, pressing it up against my skin. absolutely hate it when you get off a phone call and half your foundation ends up being on your mobile phone. As you can see, there is absolutely no transfer on the Dior side. Let's test the Laura Mercier side. Zero. So these are definitely transfer proof. So even though Dior is my winner of the day, I would be so happy to wear either of these foundations throughout the day and the night they have both done so so well and I am really impressed with both of them I think the Dior just sat on my skin a lot nicer and has more of an airbrushed finish than the Laura Mercier so I hope you found this video helpful if you have please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already there will be a watermark just down here 
click on it, it will take you through to my homepage where you can click on the red subscribe button and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.